Uh, who would like to kick us off for today? Go ahead, Mike. Okay, uh, to begin with, it's useful to understand that with special forces, everything is very, very secret. Uh, it's not like a lot of other organizations that are jumping up and down saying, take our picture, take our picture. There is a saying that's common in special forces that says, you must be mistaken. We were never there. And so much of what's done in the Green Beret is just so deniable. So when it comes to something like SOG, it is difficult to imagine how unique the SOG, MACV uh, Studies and Observation Program, how unique it was and how important the SPAF effort was. Now, SPAF was the name that Green Berets gave to the uh, pilots that were attached at CCC, and SPAF uh, was Sneaky Pete Air Force. And so uh, the Sneaky Pete was just a term always used on the dark side for people who did secret uh, activities for America. And these guys were they were unique uh sog was set up in an unusual way to say the least because the american war effort in vietnam was run by something called mac v military assistance command vietnam it had an obscure branch called sog and that was the mac v studies and observation group it was a set of pipe smoking historians. Their job supposedly was to study the and document the lessons learned from the conduct of the Vietnam War. And it was boring. Journalists paid no attention to a military history group. <clears throat> But that is where that became the locus of uh, the black operations for the Vietnam War. And so there were three units, of course, CCN up at Da Nang, CCC, where we were at Kontum, and CCS down in the Red Clay District at Bami Tuat. And SOG was set up so uniquely that there was a bird colonel in Saigon called Chief SOG. And they were pretty remarkable commanders they answered not to the commander in Vietnam, Westmoreland and later Abrams. They answered instead directly to something called SYNCPAC, which was Commander-in-Chief Pacific, as was a four-star admiral in Honolulu at Pearl. And he answered for these purposes to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in Washington. <clears throat> Beyond him, you had only the Secretary of Defense and the President. So these men, when they were off doing the photo intel uh, flights on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, this was extremely important. A lot of the information came out, and it would uh, be viewed sometimes by the Secretary of Defense, by even the President, and uh, people like SecDef, uh, Robert McNamara. So it, it was a very unusual program. And I can't say enough about the absolute, the valor and the expertise of the Snakey Pete Air Force. I was a special forces sergeant. I had run recon with RT Maine separate issue there. I had been on a company of the hatchet force. I now was running the photo intelligence program in the photo lab for uh, what we did, which was called Operation Ford Drum. And that's where that was just one part, but an important part of what people like Frank and uh, Phil did. So, uh, again, I, I was with these men on many missions against the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And when you went out each day, kind of a dawn patrol thing, you literally, they, the Russians had gone all out with also Chinese uh, communist support. They had given the North Vietnamese Army some of the finest equipment in the world. It was for research and development. They wanted to see how many American aircraft they could shoot out of the sky with their finest uh, anti-aircraft systems. 
And so when these guys took to the air and flying low level on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, you literally, you did not know whether you were going to get home that day or not. You also were operating every flight in an environment where let's say that you had an oil pressure problem. Uh, Phil and I, by the way, had an oil pressure problem one day and we ended up landing on a highway in country. Do you remember this, Phil? Yes. Yeah. And so we were there and Phil was trying to uh, get his bird dog back in operation. And I was there with my car 15 trying to make sure that nobody killed either of us um, that happened along. Fortunately, nobody hostile did. But had that happened over the border, um, that would have been a just a simple engine failure would have been a desperately uh, serious uh, situation. And those were the risks that these uh, pilots from the 219th flew. By the photo where I'm leaning against a bird dog, and on my left shoulder, I'm wearing a 219th aviation recon patch because the one thing you did not want to do if you fell into enemy hands would be associated with special forces. That's it. The, the patch there that I'm wearing for the photo flights I my cover was I was going to be a new pilot assigned to the 219th and I was just getting checked out and I didn't know very much. Anyway, these guys are absolute American heroes. And to put in a quick plug for uh, Bud, he is already making a name for himself as one of the standout historians that are dedicated to uh, showcasing the contributions of SOG. Remember, this is the group of military historians that never left an office, but it was a center of black ops. And these two men you're seeing, Phil Phillips and Frank Doherty, they probably more than any of the other pilots that I can think of really were there day in and day out. I don't know why you two were always flying the most dangerous missions. But um, I just expected it. It was going to be one of the two of you. Usually Doherty and I were put together. So that's more than you needed to hear from me. 